The Unshackled Waves, episode 191. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company from this special uh, episode from Liberty Fest uh, uh, here in uh, Brisbane with over 300 attendees and uh, 30 speakers. Uh, We're here today to to cover uh, the event and we're also uh, catching up with a lot of uh, friends and other uh, prominent speakers that we've met here today. So I hope you enjoy these uh, catch up and uh, short uh, interviews today in this episode and uh, so let's proceed. So we're here with the Liberty Fest organiser, Andrew Cooper. It's the the second uh, Liberty Fest. What's it been like organising second time around? Uh, Well, I mean, there's a learning curve in these things, isn't there, Tim? And uh, uh, so it's been better. Uh, There's more people. Uh, There's lots of energy. Uh, Feels good. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, it's exciting to be here, and it's, it's two days. Uh, uh, this is the Saturday today. You had the, the Friday uh, one, uh, so even though it was a Friday, it was still a good turnout. Yeah, yeah, I was surprised. Uh, I guess, uh, I guess uh, people were exercising their uh, right not to go to work uh, yesterday, uh, but we had a good turnout, and uh, the speakers were uh, very good. Uh, the Sydney Morning Herald uh, ran a bit of a... Uh, a fairly positive piece, actually, for a Fairfax uh, uh, journalist, uh, so uh, we're pretty happy about that. All good. Yeah, and you've obviously got a number of uh, high-profile uh, speakers this year, a lot of uh, major uh, politicians. So is it, it's, it's obviously that's a part of the uh, organisational skill as well, trying to get these these big names. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a great event last night uh, with uh, Warren Mundine, who uh, I'll note is sitting just a few feet from us. Uh, Steve Baxter, the Shark Tank entrepreneur, uh, turned up and, uh, and he's doing a couple of sessions, doing another one today. Uh, Bettina Arndt. Um, who uh, I guess you'd classify as kind of an anti-feminist and mm. quite controversial. Uh, she uh, spoke uh, very eloquently uh, yesterday and is also speaking today. Um, and we've got Tony Morris, the uh, Queen's Council, who uh, defended the QUT kids, running a free speech panel this afternoon. So uh, there's a lot going on. 30, 30 something speakers all up over a couple of days. All good. And you're also the president of uh, Liberty Works, which is a pro-liberty advocacy group uh, here in in Brisbane. You've put on uh, a lot of uh, events, uh, evening events, and also publish a lot of uh, content that give The Unshackled a bit of a run for its money from time to time. (laughs) Well, I think we're different to you guys, but um, yeah, no, we're a free market do tank is the way, so we try to get involved in issues. Uh, We do publish some articles and some content, um, and we give uh, writing opportunities to uh, the people that may not get uh, an opportunity in mainstream media. So, uh, um, yeah, no, that's yeah, that's going good, and it's amazing uh, the depth of talent. You give people an opportunity to write something, and uh, uh, it's an, it's amazing sometimes what they can produce. And some of them have gone on to produce books. Uh, Nicola Wright, who started with us, uh, is now our managing editor, and she had a book published uh, this year. Uh, and there's a couple of others that also look like they're going to be published now. So, uh, it's it's good. Now, liberty is the, the key word in all of the, the organisations you're uh, involved in. So where do you think we're at in the, the fight for, for liberty? Because we, we've had the major politicians speak and all the questions have been like, what about this law? You know, did you try and fight, uh, f- uh, fight for freedom and less government here? Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, look, I just think we're totally over-governed. Um, now, it's not just the fact that we've got all these layers of government. It's not just the fact that... Um, uh, that we pay too much tax. It's just, it's in the little things as well. Um, you know, the nanny state is all powerful now. You know, uh, Bettina Art gave this very uh, um, uh, insightful speech about how there's, uh, uh, there's, there's laws that are being investigated in New South Wales about getting, uh, you know, explicit consent, uh, you know, for sexual relations. So they're even trying to regulate, our, you know, the way we all have sex these days. Um, you know, so it starts with uh, bike helmets and then it, it sort of permeates into all aspects of our lives, in, including potentially in our, our sex lives. I mean, it's just insane. Um, the IPA have done uh, research that shows 6,000 pages of new federal laws are introduced every year. 6,000 pages, just when you think we've been regulated, we've regulated everything we could possibly think of, government still, well, the federal government still manages to come up with 6,000 pages more. It's insane. 
Oh yeah, they judge their success on how much uh, legislation. Yeah. Uh, it can be a bit of a of a demoralising uh, mission to to fight for for liberty, but it's worth it. Well, I mean, it is. Um, I mean, what our mission here is, is to get people together to, you know, make people aware of these potential issues. Um, and we have a lot of politicians here too, and so we talk to them. They talk to us, but, you know, we talk to them. So Senator James Patterson was up from Victoria, and uh, uh, we've got uh, Craig Kelly um, here uh, this evening. Um, who else have we got? We've got Amanda Stoker, uh, Senator Amanda Stoker from uh, the Liberal Party here in Queensland. Uh, you know, One Nation's Malcolm Roberts is turning up. Uh, he's not a senator yet, but he's endorsed to uh, to run again. And we can talk to them as much as they talk to us. Yeah, there's certainly a lot to be optimistic about. And you've done your bit with uh, this uh, conference and, of course, with Liberty Works. It's been great to catch up. I look forward to more uh, Liberty Fests, uh, maybe around the country. Uh, we're doing our bit, as you do too, Tim. So well done to you as well. Thank you. So we're here today at uh, Liberty Fest with uh, one of Australia's, I'd say, still most uh, popular YouTubers, Independent Man, uh, also known by his real name, Scott Crow. Good to catch up. Thanks, Tim. Good to be here again for the second Liberty Fest, bigger Liberty Fest, two days this year. So, yeah, good. And you were uh, our first ever guest on the Unshackled Waves episode four. And I think for the first 12 episodes, I just hope, hope nobody is listening to those. <laughs> yeah, we had some uh, technical difficulties, as I remember. Now, you've, um, you, as we mentioned, uh, you've got over 100,000 uh, subscribers. Uh, all of your videos on cultural issues, they were really well reasoned and thought out, but you, you stepped away uh, uh, in the end. Can you t elaborate on the reasons why? Yeah, I mean, I guess a couple of, a couple of reasons. One was that I was going a bit nuts, um, sitting in a room by yourself all day, talking to yourself. Um, is not what it's cracked up to be, particularly if you're a social type of person. And uh, that was one reason. And the other one was it wasn't particularly lucrative for me. Um, I could get by, but um, I s sort of saw the writing on the wall. Um, and I think it's become more difficult. And unless you can get, say, support via things like Patreon, PayPal, it's... It's, it's more and more difficult on uh, YouTube. On YouTube used to be, you throw it up, see how many views you can get, you'll get paid. Um, today, of course, there's so many more filters on what is and isn't accept is isn't isn't monetizable. And I, I'm sure that you have the same problem with videos going up that don't get monetized because of the content. Uh, you know, it's considered controversial or sensitive. So. Um, so I guess uh, two main reasons, yeah, I was going a bit nuts and um, it just wasn't particularly lucrative and I didn't think I could sustain myself uh, going forward, yeah. Yeah, uh, YouTube uh, demonetization it's uh, affected a lot of uh, YouTubers uh, on the right and you can always uh, appeal it, but then by the time that uh, YouTube, if they uh, overturn the decision, it's already too late. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just to give you an example, a recent example, Bettina Arndt put out a video of her recent um, run-in with Sydney University protesters. Um, I, she asked me to repost it on my channel, which I did. Uh, it was demonetized straight away. I appealed it, and um, it was rejected. They don't, they don't tell you why. They just say it doesn't um, meet our guidelines or criteria. I don't know why. It's it's footage of uh, what happened to Patina at um, at Sydney University, and it's it's all very factual. There's nothing um, particularly. Contra I, I guess maybe it's because she went there to talk about the fake rape crisis on campus and me just saying that probably means that this video will be demonetized as well um, so that's kind of what you're dealing with now before you didn't have to worry about that you didn't have I mean if we go back to the heady days of 2016 or even early 2017 before the the um, adpocalypse it was fine but not so much today and you've given me your uh, business card now. You're now a, a senior wealth uh, advisor with mm -hmm. uh, Charter Markets, and you uh, put a promo uh, video on your YouTube channel. So, uh, career change somewhat? Yeah, it's sort of a little, but 
going back to something I used to do a long time ago, actually. Senior Wealth Advisor is just a really technical name for stockbroker. That's what we would have called ourselves 20 years ago. The senior part just means the grey hair, <laughs> I'm told. Um, but yeah, I, I used to be in institutional stockbroking in the research side. This is retail facing, so I deal with you know people like yourself who are interested in investing, um, whether that's stocks, equities, uh, ETFs, CFDs, the whole range of products. So yeah, that's what I do now. I'm, I've always been interested and fascinated by financial markets and it's good to be back in an environment with other people in the office. And the great thing is that Charter Markets supports uh, me continuing to do YouTube videos if I want to. So that's pretty rare and, uh, and it's good. Yeah, that's always awesome in this day and age where uh, Antifa or all those other groups, if they find out you're right-wing, they'll ring up your employer and uh, harass them. So it's it's good that if you've got a supportive uh, boss in your uh, day job that, uh, yeah, it gives you a lot more uh, liberty to pursue uh, these other things. Yeah, and I look, I don't think that I've ever said anything that's particularly controversial, but we know <laughs> people on the left are, yeah. are nuts and, you know, will call you a Nazi because you're slightly to the right of Bernie Sanders. So, but yeah, I think my employees have been very uh, understanding and, and supportive of that, so it's great. And you do plan to release uh, video videos every now and then on, on cultural issues like you used to? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I won't be ever able to get back to the sort of five videos a week kind mm, of... That was uh, amazing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think... Maybe I've put one out in the last month, but I hopefully I'd like to at least get back to a couple of months. Um, I do have a newsletter that I'm writing now, which is free, um, and there's a paid version that has financial advice that comes under the banner of Charter Markets. Uh, it's five dollars a month, but um, yeah, I, I hope to get more back into it. The other thing I have to do, of course, because I'm back in finance, is that I'm also studying to get my accreditation back up, which. I've lost because I've been out of the industry for so long so it's just a matter of time at the moment but I, I do intend to get back into it. Well it's been good to catch up here and it's good to hear you're still uh, committed to the, the cause and we look forward to, to seeing your uh, videos again. Thanks a lot Tim. And we're catching up with an old friend today James Fox Higgins from The Rational Rise. Good to talk again. Likewise Tim, good to see you. Now, the, the Rational Rise channel has pretty much become the, the James Fox Higgins channel now. Its uh, feature program is the, the James Fox Higgins show, which you broadcast live on all the uh, major social media uh, platforms. So you've made the, the transition from a YouTuber to now live broadcaster. Yeah, that's right. Although I'd say that it's become the James Fox Higgins platform only for a, for a lack of collaborators. I'm definitely looking for more people to contribute to the platform. Um, but they haven't been forthcoming in the last few weeks, but uh, yeah, definitely sending out an invitation to anyone who wants to uh, contribute to a nuanced conversation that I, I'd like to grow the team. You didn't knock uh, Robin Spen off. What's that, sorry? You didn't knock them off. Oh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, Rob, Rob took himself out of the equation to focus on his career and, and his personal life, and uh, Sven is still very much on board. The Sven Lowe Show is coming, coming soon. Oh, that's something to look forward to. Now, there's uh, been a lot of changes with you since the, the last time that we spoke. You've become a, a born-again Christian. Uh, Jesus Talk is a big part of the James uh, Fox Higgins show. Can you, so can you describe uh, that journey? I can. Well, I, you know, I, I've described it at length on the show, so I encourage people to hear the whole story there. But the, the brief version is that um, I've, uh, I've grown up very young, uh, a Christian, at age eight. My parents left the church for personal reasons and for difficulties they were having with members of the congregation. Um, leaving the church led them to eventually turn away from the faith altogether. And although I was still a Christian, probably for longer than they were as a child, I eventually lost sight of, of Jesus and I uh, got swept up in the world and turned away. And, uh, and I realized as I was reaching the end of my 20s, especially as a father who's got a lot uh, invested in the future of this world, um, I started to realize that I'd lost my way and, uh, and there was a big hole in my heart. And, um, and it, w it took Jordan Peterson and his biblical lectures for me to square away my intellectual difficulties with Christianity and to, um, to realize that um, the kind of literal um, truths and materialistic truths that I was judging Christianity by were the wrong metric, that there were other 
ways uh, to read the Bible stories and to find much higher truths in them without necessarily having to give up my rationalism. In fact, it was that rational approach to Christianity that brought me home to Jesus. And in your show, you, uh, it's, ve it's very much you, you wear your faith on your, your sleeve now. You very much want to spread it with people. Sometimes it's a bit too much for a, a non-believer uh, su such as me. Uh, I, li I like to sort of stick to the agree to disagree, but you, you like those sort of philosophical God versus atheist uh, or debate, or I shouldn't say debates, but philosophical discussions. Yeah, we, we have tried a couple of debates on it, and uh, I don't personally favour the debate because I find that when you when you have a debate, you've, you've gone in with a position, you usually come out with the same position, and if you're lucky, maybe you've convinced a few people at home. I prefer the dialectic approach, and that's what Sven and I do. He still identifies as an atheist, and he... Um, he, but he and I share a lot of common values and a lot of common views. So we we really thrash it out together over two or three hours at a time, and uh, we get right into the nitty gritty of it. And I I um I do feel compelled to preach and to uh, to bring people over to to Christianity, um, but I always want to do it in the most gentle and nuanced way, and and really engage with their gripes properly because all of the questions and the doubts that people have, I've had too in my life, and and it's worth trying to navigate through them properly. And also, you've uh, become, uh, dare I say, born again, a uh, healthy person. I, uh, this is the first time I've seen you for a while. I noticed how how much slimmer you are, and you've spoken about on your Facebook page that diet and exercise. So uh, that's obviously you've, you've found that a positive change for you. Oh, absolutely! It's been great for for mind and body, and I think I think it's a, a follow-on from the spiritual transformation that, that I've enjoyed. That. Um, you know, as Jordan Peterson says, it's sort yourself out, right? And this this is actually the name of a business that I'm starting with my wife where we're going to try to help people of all walks of life to um, figure out an individual approach to sorting their own lives out psychologically, uh, in their relationships, in their communication and, and in their physical health. So uh, I think, yeah, phys the, the mind and the body are acting as one and if you want to have a healthy mind, if you want to be able to think rationally and to be able to work out difficult ideas, you need to be in a state of physical health. I think that's very important. Yeah, it's definitely been a, a great transformation and I know uh, even though I'm not as good as I used to, that diet and exercise, it does have such a positive, you have much more energy and it's a real positive uh, impact on you. Yeah, I, I found it in particular it's affected my moods, you know, that my emotional regulation uh, is much stronger now because my, my body's in a healthier state and it's and I, I'm not I'm not perfect or, or strict really about it I slip off the wagon often and I indulge in unhealthy eating or I I um, you know we just moved house and so my exercise regime has really suffered because I've fallen out of the routine uh, and I can feel the difference you know I can feel my mind start to fatigue and my my mood start to be harder to regulate so it's it's so crucially important to people to begin with the body uh, and then to you know use that to in increase the health of the mind and the spirit. Now, when we uh, last spoke to you on the the Unshackled uh, channel, uh, we were both under a uh, thousand subscribers. But well, you've grown up to last time I checked, it was around six thousand. Yeah, we're we're very close to seven thousand on YouTube, and then I've got another two and a half thousand on Facebook. So all yeah. told, it's it's almost ten thousand. And we cracked uh, two thousand uh, recently, and Excellent. and obviously it's yeah, you've probably found it's the more cultural commentary that uh, gets a lot of people interested. You did several videos on the Lawrence Southern and, and Stefan Molyneux protesters tear, tearing them apart uh, bit, bit by bit they, they got massive views yeah um, people people are, I guess are hungry for a little bit of um, bread and circuses and so when when we're seeing crazy people who are um, aligned with the left um, we we find ourselves um, able to comment on, on their behavior in a way that's uh, it's, it's quite alarming for people to see what they're doing and um, yeah I must admit it's not my favorite topic to talk about I don't really like to wreck leftists you know it's not not my favorite hobby um, <laughs> but um, but it does it does have a demand you know so I guess just from a few a purely business angle I, I probably will do more of those types of commentaries but my commitment in the rational rise uh, and I've, I've not always nailed it and I won't always I'll, I'll make mistakes but my commitment is in trying to um, talk about um, crazy behavior from the left and talk about um, the, the awful things our politicians are doing but try to uh, discuss them with nuance and with balance and try to see 
what it is that our political foes are doing right or what are their motives that are shared with ours. It's often the outcomes that are wrong, even if the motives are right. Yeah, well, you're certainly uh, kicking goals and going from strength to strength to look more of the, the James Fox Higgins show. It's not every Tuesday night, but that's if it's happening Tuesday nights, isn't it? We're, we've been pretty consistent recently, and I'm hoping to keep it to be every Tuesday. Um, I alternate between a purely live show and pre-recorded interviews that I, that I um, have with you know various guests uh, but yeah at this stage it is every Tuesday night um, and unfortunately sometimes I'll just need to take a break but I usually uh, give a heads up when I'm going to take a week off that's the beauty of having our own platforms is we're not beholden to anyone else's no. schedule you know and it's nice to get a message from somebody saying oh I wish your show had been on I missed it this week you know uh, but to have that control that's, that's the beauty of the alternative media and the free media that we're part of so you haven't yet checked out the, the Rational Rise and James will definitely see each other at an event uh, like this soon. No doubt, it's at least twice a year we're bumping into each other, so hopefully more as time goes on. So we're here now with uh, Nicola Wright, uh, author and now managing editor at uh, Liberty Works. So uh, we spoke about, or well, it's ages ago now, it feels like, about, because uh, you're, you're an uh, advocate of, of homeschooling, but there, there's more to you than that. You're a passionate Liberty advocate. I am, and thanks for having me, Tim. It's good to talk again. I should point out, though, that I'm no longer homeschooling my children, but I'm still definitely a homeschooling advocate. I don't regret that decision at all. I think it was the best thing I did for them. You're for choice. That's the important thing. That's exactly. what liberty is about. Yes, that's exactly right. Now, you, as I mentioned, you're a published author now. You published one of the, the first books in the, the Snowflake Chronicles, uh, Right Thinking on Abortion. So can you uh, t talk about what you explore in the book? Well, what uh, Anthony Capello from Conacourt Publishing actually commissioned the book for me for, his, for me for his series. And I think he wanted something that was a uniquely Australian context. Um, so... Um, straight out I will say I take the pro-life position in the book mm. but I, I believe I do it in a, in a compassionate way that's sympathetic to the needs of women. Um, so it's a simple book where we talk about what is abortion, why should we keep talking, why should we keep the conversation open. Um, I run through a, the, a law in Australia in every state um, and, and go through the philosophical and scientific arguments for and against abortion. Yeah, I definitely recommend that uh, people grab a copy from from Connor Court. They're a good good publishing company. Yes, they are. They're doing a great job. Now, uh, as I mentioned, you're now the managing editor of uh, Liberty Works, the the website they publish, or oh, bit of a competitor to to the Unshackled. But uh, yeah, it's you've been pumping out a lot of a lot of good 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 articles, which is which is good to see. Yeah, and I think it's really important that we do that and that we have a space that advocates for classical liberal and libertarian principles in Australia. And although we are kind of in a little bit of competition, I think we actually occupy different spheres to the unshackled. Now, Liberty Works, it's a Brisbane-based uh, organisation. You're actually from uh, Perth. Uh, there, there's actually a uh, Perth-based advocacy group there, the Western Australian Taxpayers Alliance. That's right, and that's something else that I've just recently uh, got involved with as well. Um, so uh, they just need some help in maintaining campaigns in WA because we are on the other side of the country. And um, so Tim Andrews was wanting someone on the ground in Western Australia, so I've um, agreed to help out, in particular with the uh, vaping, legalised vaping campaign. So I've been speaking to uh, some WA state politicians on that issue. So that's been something new. As what is the state of liberty like out in the out in the West? Uh, there, I know that there's the secessionist movement. I'm not sure where you stand on that. Uh, I agree with it and support it, but I don't know how big and realistic it is. Uh, we like to talk about it, but I'm not sure the st of the status of that movement and whether it has any real... Um, potential. So this is the second ever Liberty Fest. You and I were both at the, the first one. Uh, what do you, what do you th make of, of this year? It's been well, it's two days uh, this year. It's, it's been an impressive lineup of, of speakers and yeah. some uh, good, good debate as well. Yes, it's definitely bigger and better than last year and we learnt a lot last time. Last time was a success but there was you know, still a few things we had to learn and there's things we have to learn this time as well. 
Uh, but it's been a blast. I've enjoyed it. A lot of hard work, though. Yeah, I can imagine you're one of the well, you're volunteers, so there's always uh, a lot of uh, housekeeping to take care of every, every yes. five or so minutes. That's right. You're always looking at your watch and checking the schedule and, and all trying to work together to make sure it runs smoothly. So I hope for uh, the punters who've come along that it's been a smooth experience for them. Well, I know you want to have a bit of a break now, so I'll let you have that, but thanks for speaking with The Unshackled once again. Thank you, Tim. Always a pleasure. That's it for this special Liberty Fest edition of the show. Now, as always, at the, the end of the show, I'd like to remind you of other upcoming events. Uh, next uh, Saturday on the uh, 6th of October, it is the International Freedom of Speech Day. There's two rallies happening. There is one in Wiley Park, uh, Lakemba, uh, which is being or uh, organised by the True Blue Crew New South Wales and Patriot lawyer John Bolton, who is also uh, at this conference. And in Melbourne, we've got uh, Ivy Yemeni and the Australian Liberty Alliance organising a free speech rally outside of uh, Docklands uh, Facebook headquarters there. There is also a, another rally happening in Melbourne the following weekend on Saturday the 13th of October, the March for the Babies, which is to, it's held every, uh, around about this time every year. Uh, it's the 10th anniversary of the passing of Victoria's abortion law reform bill. And so it is done to remember all of the babies killed during that time and to advocate for a change in the law. Also, the next uh, big name coming to Australia is internet television personality and founder of the Proud Boys, Gavin McGuinness. He'll be touring all the major cities and he's being hosted by Penthouse Australia and you can book your tickets by going to gavinlive.com.au. As always, we can't be at Liberty Fest and all these other things without your support, so please consider becoming a patron of The Unshackled at patreon.com slash The Unshackled or like many of you have been doing is send us a direct contribution via our PayPal link at paypal.me slash The Unshackled. So that's it from me for at Liberty Fest here in Brisbane and we'll see you back for our regular show in the future. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.